That's right. The electrician quit his job to be a handyman to make more money. Now, before we break this down and why I think that might be a bad idea, it could be a good idea, but it rarely is. Couple announcements. We have cock on hats. That's right. I know a lot of you've been waiting forever, almost a year, to get a cock gun, an official original cock gun on your hat. That will be linked in the description below. The best way to get a hold of me to get a video made for you or just have some conversation with me is through Patreon. That is also linked in the description below. We're going to get to the topic of this video and I'm going to elaborate on that because I get a lot of messages from people that want to leave a certain profession to be a handyman or just do home maintenance and home repairs for money. More money than they think that they're making as an employee doing whatever. This electrician didn't tell me exactly what his hourly rate is as an employee. If you are an employee and you have an hourly rate, that is a portion of your compensation package. Uh, you have to look deeper into what your total compensation is at your place of business. You know, smaller companies, they have less benefits. Uh, larger companies have a lot of benefits. Uh, if you are a union worker, you have ridiculous benefits for very little work. And that brings us to uh, the union thing. A lot of guys, when they're presented with someone not making enough money in the skilled trades, their automatic response is, Join a union! Join a union, man! Join the Electrical Brotherhood of Dukes! Yeah! They're very, very proud of their brotherhood in the union. Today's video is sponsored by Hatch. Hatch is a business checking account designed for small business owners like you and me has no NSF fees, up to 5% cash back on gas, restaurants, hotels, and car rentals. You also get discounts on business software like Yelp, Square, and Indeed. You can get your first three months completely free by using the link in the description below this video. If you're watching on mobile, you're gonna have to click the screen and you'll be able to see the description. Lots of information down there in the description. How many of you guys are still using your personal checking account to do business related things like cash checks that you get from customers, buying materials out of your personal checking account? It's not a good idea. What you want to do is have a separate checking account like Hatch and keep your personal finances in their own accounts. What's the reason for that, you ask? Well, if anything were to ever go awry with your, your small business, your furniture restoration, your painting business, your trim carpentry business, your handyman business, and they say, uh, hey, we got to check you out. Let's freeze your accounts. They're going to freeze your business accounts, not your personal accounts. So that's a good reason to have them separated. We're going to go back to the video discussing this electrician that wants to leave his job as an employee to become self-employed home improvement specialist or AKA a handyman. If you live in an area where there is unionization of the skilled trades, yeah, go ahead, join the union. I would think long and hard about relocating to an area or a city, more specifically, that has union electricians, union plumbers, union elevator operators, union uh, sweepers. They have union unionized sweepers, like with a broom in some cities. Um, we may discuss unions versus non-unions in another video. A large part of the United States does not have unions for skilled trades and it's not an option. So you're gonna be making 20, 25 bucks an hour as a journeyman electrician. And now back to what I said earlier, you gotta look at the total compensation. Do you get paid federal holidays? Do you get sick days? Do you get vacation days? Do you have any sort of supplemented health insurance plan? any life insurance, any disability insurance. Those are all things you need to write down and put a dollar figure next to them because that is part of your compensation. Now, if you were to go self-employed, you would have to pay for those things out of pocket. What are people willing to pay in the area that you intend to do business? That is very, very important that you do that um, market analysis of what people are willing to pay. I've talked about this in most of my videos. Uh, have some element of you need to know what people are willing to pay for that specific work where you intend to do business. If you're thinking of relocating to an area where people are willing or desperate in some cases to pay people to do basic home maintenance, there are some other factors that you need to look at. Those places 
often have a high cost of housing, uh, both in the rental market and the cost to get into owning a house, buying a house buying a condo even, it's often very high. That number is a relative number. What I mean by that is some people think $300,000 is a lot of money for a one bedroom condo. Some people think $300,000 is a lot of money for a four bedroom house. And in some places, $300,000 will buy you nothing. You can't get anything for 300,000. You gotta get to a half a million, 450 to 550 to get an entry level house. Uh, rental prices, uh, 800 bucks a month, 1,000 bucks a month, or $3,000 a month for what you're used to living in. The main reason I went self-employed and left the world of being an employee is time. There's two elements to that. Free time to do what I want when I want. Uh, you can't do that with a regular job. You can't just say, hey, you know what? I'm taking the week off. Goodbye. Uh, they don't let that happen in most cases, especially in the skilled trades. The, you just, there's just no time for that. We can't just have people leaving to go on vacation. Work doesn't get done. There's a lot of slack to pick up once you get back from your vacation. So it took me a long time to build up a safety net of money, customers, jobs. I've, I've been taking about three months off a year for, I can't remember how long, but I don't work three months out of the year. We've done the math, and let's say the math might be in your favor. You're saying, you know, I want the free time, and I'm willing to pay for all those things that come as a part of my employee compensation package, my federal holidays, my sick days, my medical coverage. I'm cool with all that. Do you have what it takes to be self-employed and get all that free time and, and make some decent money? There are people who are cut out for running a business and being self-employed, and there are people who will never be able to do it. There's a lot of skilled tradesmen out there who have went out on their own and break even. Still paycheck to paycheck, uh, job to job. They never get ahead. They never have a safety net, you know, they don't have anything put away for retirement. Handy me in from the future here. Uh, I was editing this video and thought I could add a little bit better perspective and less tangents. We're gonna assume that this electrician has the skill set uh, to do electrical repairs, plumbing repairs, uh, all home repairs, because basically all home repairs are very basic. Uh, everything you see me do on my main YouTube channel you could probably teach a monkey to do. And if you've been in the skilled trades, residential trades, uh, you just know, you just know how to fix things. Especially if you've had some success in the residential trades, uh, that means your brain works right and you can figure things out. How things come apart, how things go back together, you know how to read a tape measure, you know how to use a pencil, uh, you got some power tools, pretty basic. Now, none of that matters to be successful out on your own. Now you can get by, and I think I said earlier that a lot of skilled tradesmen that go out on their own still live paycheck to paycheck. If you're interested in just maintaining your, ooh, I'm gonna use a big word here, socioeconomic status as a blue collar employee, you can do that self-employed and, and stay there. Uh, but if you're interested and, and moving up in the world, you know, like the Jeffersons, moving on up uh, for you and your kids. If you had got kids, maybe you don't have kids yet. Yet is the key word. Now, what if you could do it for yourself, your kids, and your grandkids? That's a big deal. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of work. But it still has nothing to do with your skill set. It has to do with your motivation, your determination, how you deal with stress, how you deal with anxiety. You can learn customer service, but you have to want to learn customer service skills. You can learn project management. You can learn to budget. You can learn to do accounting. You can learn to do all this stuff. Those are things you have to focus on is your mental state. Uh, how motivated are you? And another thing, motivation only lasts so long. Then there becomes discipline. I hate those gurus on the internet, but a lot of it is true and it's always just regurgitated. Uh, you need discipline. Uh, you can use your motivation to create habits 
and, but you still need the discipline to maintain those habits. Uh, certain people can maintain them for a certain amount of time. Uh, when I first started out, my first five years, I would work every single chance I would get. Uh, and a lot of times it comes in, in sections of time throughout the year. So you have an opportunity to work 60 days in a row. You have to work 60 days in a row. You have to do 14 hour days with tool in the hands and another four hours uh, gathering materials, driving around town. So 18 hour days. That's true. It's, it's a real thing that people do to get ahead in business, to get ahead in anything, is they have to put in more time than the competition. Customer service expert, you need to learn how to be that. It has to be in your personality characteristics to be a customer service expert. You have to learn management. You have to manage yourself. You have to be worse than your boss is now. If you have a boss right now, he is a compared to the boss you need to be on yourself. So I yell at myself all the time. Call myself evil names when I screw up or I do something very inefficient that costs me time, costs me money, uh, that would get most uh, bosses fired from their business. You gotta learn to talk to people. Gotta be good at that. And you have to be willing to learn things out on your own. You gotta learn what to do with your money so that you are not paycheck to paycheck or job to job like 99% of self-employed tile guys or electricians. I know so many of them. I know a guy right now who is not the electrician that was the inspiration for this video, but he's another electrician uh, looking to leave the employee lifestyle and start an LLC. I was like, oh no, LLC got to go S corporation. Of course, we don't know each other through social media. We know each other uh, in real life and nobody knows that I do these videos or have a business. They don't know anything about me. I'm a mystery man. Asking for referrals was a skill set that I, I had to master. Maybe we'll do a video if there's interest on the actual dialogue that I went through uh, a decade or, or more ago. I can't remember. I'm in 13, 14 years now, 100% uh, self-employed. And there's been, there were many learning experiences along the road in those first few years and how I talked to customers and how they perceived me and their confidence in me and the price that I gave them. Don't forget to get yourself a cock gun hat. Official, original, only one place to get them. Links in the description. Goodbye.